Welcome to the 2023 edition of the Coweta Shark Tank. I'm your host, Donald White, Science Content Specialist for Coweta County School System. We're excited to be bringing you our sixth edition of the competition. Our goal is still the same, to identify some of the students' best ideas in community service, inventions, and entrepreneurship. Over 75 student projects were submitted this year. You're seeing the finalist. To help us select the winners, let's meet our sharks. Andrew Copeland. Andrew was elected to the District 5 seat and has served on the Coweta County Board of Education since December of 2019 as one of the seven members. He was also voted by his peers in January of 2023 to serve as chairman of the Board of Education. Andrew is also the post-sale operations manager for GovPlanet, a Ritchie Brothers company. During his free time outside of the office, Andrew serves as a board member for the Noonan Artist in Residence Program, Art Res a nonprofit organization that directly benefits the arts in our local community. Maggie Renstraw is the Community Economic Development Coordinator at Coweta Fayette EMC. Maggie has been part of the Coweta Fayette EMC team since 2019. Maggie has experience running her own marketing business, as well as experience in multiple other industries from tires to masonry to other architectural products. Maggie and her team won the 2022 Edgar F. Chestnut Award for the best total communication program from the National Rural Electric Cooperative Association for her work with Coweta County and Fayette County school teachers on the 2021 Alternative Energy Summer Educator Adventure. She has a Bachelor's of Science from Georgia Tech in Textile Management and an MBA in Marketing from Georgia State University. Chad Ramey. Chad is a third year PhD student at the Georgia Institute of Technology where he studies interactive systems, computational materials, and pattern recognition. A Northgate High School graduate, Chad serves on the IceFin robot team providing software development and computer technical support. So far in his career, Chad has interned as a robotics engineer for NASA's ER4 Robotics Division and a software engineer for Google's Research Division. During the 2013-2014 academic year, Chad served as the president of the Georgia Tech Invention Studio, a student-run makerspace on Georgia Tech's campus. In his free time, Chad builds battle bots, dabbles in high energy physics, playing the guitar and gourmet cooking. Sarah Jacobs. Sarah Jacobs is president of the Coweta County Development Authority and started with the organization in August of 2022. In this role, she leads the strategy and implementation of the authority's business retention, expansion, and attraction efforts. Her expertise crosses all sectors, including aerospace and defense, automotive, advanced manufacturing, health, and bioscience. Some of her recent wins include Freyer Battery, Deli Star, Marston Foods, Ostatar, Global Wafer, and Briggs and & Stratton. Sarah is a graduate of Maryville University in St. Louis, receiving both her BS in Business Administration as well as her MBA. She received her Certificate in Design Thinking from Missouri State University. Sarah and her husband, Matt, live in Newton and have one daughter, Jordan. Now to meet our contestants. You'll meet our 11 finalists. Our Sharks will choose the best idea as the winner. Hi Sharks, this, my name is Keegan Wimbush, this is Christopher Thomas, and this is Linda Campbell, and today we're going to explain to you our product, Bubble Bin. So, have you ever wanted to recycle, but there's a trash can right in front of you, and you say, eh, oh well. That's where our product, Bubble Bins, comes in. A study conducted showed that employees that had a higher, that got a higher payroll increased their worth ethic. We use this concept with bubble bins by giving you bubble gum to increase your worth ethic to want to recycle more. We have constructed a, oh, what is a, what is a recycling bin with a bubble gum machine on the side. How it works is that you drop a plastic bottle uh, down the top and it will, and it will sense it and display, uh, and give you a bubble gum. Well, thank you so much. Um, you know, right now, especially in the world, uh, we need more uh, folks out there to recycle. So I think this is a really cool concept. Um, my question is, how, how long did it take you all to develop this? Um, it took us maybe five months, five to six months. 
I love the idea of incentivizing someone to do the right thing. I'm curious, were there any other snack options you considered other than bubble gum? Not, we haven't necessarily thought of that, but we thought of bubble gum because it is one of like the most long, longest lasting uh, types of food. I like how you all have used a uh, recyclable and possibly recycled material in your prototype construction. I'm wondering if maybe um, you all have considered if you could construct your, you know, real uh, functional units out of recycled material as well. Is that something that might be possible? Aluminum is a possible um, solution. How much would it cost to build one of these and how long would it take? How, how fast could you scale up? Probably around, for a full-sized one that's about uh, this tall, mm -hmm. um, probably about 1,500 okay. with all the sensors and yeah. things up. Okay. Thank you all so much. Really appreciate you. Great job. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kylie Watts. And my name is Jimmy Martin. And today we'll be presenting our project. The automatic plant water. A commonly found problem among people is the problem of not having the time to water your plants. Whether you simply just don't have the time or you have too much work, this can be a problem because it can lead to your plants dying. And our solution to this problem is an automated watering system that has an indicator telling you when you need to refill it. It waters into our plants and it is a drip system. Our product works by the, by the per person filling the tap with water and the, and the water flowing down the tube into the filter. Um, the filter sends the water drip by drip into the plants. When there's water in the capsule, the fluid will rise and the LD will be turned off. When there's no water in the capsule, you can continue. When there's no water in the capsule, the fluid will sink and the LED will turn on and we don't need to refill it. The materials, in, the materials that we use to make our product is a capsule, a tube, a fill, a fill, nope. a battery, battery, wires, a full switch, and LED. When researching our problem, we made sure that our design was different from others similar to it. Um, ours uh, has an indicator telling you we need to refill it. It is a drip system, and it waters into our plants. These characteristics make our product different from similar products similar to it. And this is our product, the yeah, automatic plant yeah. water. We're going to ask you a few questions. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is a great idea. I definitely have this problem at home. Um, you mentioned how you came up with it. My question is, how did you figure out, what made you think of the LED indicator, and how did you figure out the wiring? Uh, well, my dad, he is an, um, an engineer. Okay. So, and he built a computer from scratch, too. So he kind of gave us a kind of a rundown on how it works, but we had to put it together. And one thing... Um, one thing that we figured out was we, most of the time, we, before we made the indicator, we remember we didn't know like when it would be empty, so we wanted to make something to kind of give you an idea of when it would be empty. So we made an indicator telling you when you need to refill it. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I, I applaud you for uh, sort of not requiring a microcontroller or like fancy digital uh, system in this. The uh, float system is quite elegant in implementation. Um, I also like how you don't have like an active pump or something on this. Do you think that this uh, design could be, you could uh, use one reservoir from multiple plants potentially? Yeah, I feel like we could probably make multiple reservoirs, but for this, uh, it was a, mostly a prototype, so we just decided to make one. Sure. For the, for the time being. 
I love this idea. I struggle to keep plants alive because I um, often have great intentions and then forget to water them. So the fact that this is automatically watering it and then giving me the signal to remind me to add more water. I'm curious if you think you could add fertilizer or plant food to the water too so that it would also get a dose of that. Yeah, I feel like we could. We just have to make another, um, another capsule for it. Very cool. Um, yeah, I echo <laughs> the fellow sharks. I can keep a plant alive <laughs> if you paid me. Um, so I really think this is cool. I think the design is not overcomplicated. Um, I, I really appreciate that. Um, my question is, so I think the indicator light is, is, is a really cool feature. Um, so how long until you have to refill the capsule, like um. on average? We, we didn't get done testing, but while we were testing, it lasted for at least a week. Okay. We asked, but it got to like right here, so we estimated it could um, last for about three weeks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great idea. Great job. Thanks. Hi, I'm Kimber. This is Greer, this is Kate, and that's Lucy. And this is the Aquarius Bot. The Aquarius Bot is designed to solve the problem of having to routinely clean your fish tank like once a week. And cleaning a fish tank usually takes like about an hour to an hour and a half, depending on the size of it. And you also have to take out the real or artificial plants, the pebbles, and other decor. So this is designed to make it where it's really easy so you can just slide it across the side of a fish tank and it cleans both the inside and the outside at the same time. Awesome. You can talk. Um, so yeah, it glides across the edges of a fish tank, and but it's not a substitute to a deep clean, it's just to put off the deep clean. We found that um, it usually takes like a really long time between taking everything out, letting it dry, put it back in, and doing all of the other things that you have to do. And this can also make it where you don't like you don't have to take everything out, so that it's like a lot faster. Sweet. Thanks for thanks for telling us about your your projects. Very very cool stuff. So um, I, I really appreciate you covered a lot of um, like questions I had in your presentation there. But uh, one thing I'm kind of still wondering about is you mentioned uh, this kind of prolongs the time between deep cleans. Um, what's the difference between using this and like how often you would normally have to deep clean? So with this, you only have to um, clean it when you see that it's like they're starting to get stuff built up on the edges of the tank and things. So for the deep cleaning, it would put it off to where you only have to clean it about like once a month. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank you. Well, I love anything that saves me time on deep cleaning. So I'm a fan <laughs> of that. So I know you said you didn't have to take everything out, like the pebbles and that kind of thing when you were using this. Can you leave the fish and other marine life in there while you're doing it? Yes, okay. except for like snails that are on the side on of the, the side. tank. That makes sense. All right. Well, uh, yeah, I uh, I would need this uh, growing up because it was very difficult to keep the fish tank clean. So I think this is a great product. Um, what is the product made of? So this is a car sponge. These are crochet needles, and this is like a small paint roller. Okay. And did I'm sorry, just a follow up. Did it take much to develop it? Mm -mm. Okay. I noticed the white and the green sides, Did they, are they different textures? Are they different somehow? Yes, so the sponge was the inside of the car sponge, and then this is just like a cloth, and we put this on the inside so that it, you put it against the outside of the glass so that it cleans like fingerprints and other things off, while the sponge on this side like scrubs and cleans the dirt off. I love it, very, very simple, very effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so Thank much you so for much. presenting yeah. today. Great job. Thank you. Hello, 
my name is Daphne, and I created the smoke detector for the hearing impaired. So the problem is people with hearing losses, they do not carry the correct equipment. So how will they be alerted of fires? So imagine your relatives during the night, how will they know when there's a fire, when they're asleep? So I created this. Um, in, it includes a display screen, a vibration motor, and two LED lights. So during the day, they can place this somewhere where they can see, let's say the counter or something, and these two lights will start flashing when the smoke or the flame sensor detects anything, and the display screen will say, oops, something's wrong. So during the night, they could put this on a bedside table, and when either one of these detects something, this that goes under the pillow, it'll start vibrating to alert them. So yes, some of these products like these exist in the market, but it is unlike theirs, mine includes all the features. And what I mean by that is that they might have flashing lights or they might have a vibration motor, but they do not have a, a, a display screen. So, so um, one of the main things I wanted to focus on was its portability because other things, they either attach the wall, the ceiling, so you, this could be taken to places anywhere, like friends, families, hotels. So it's an expensive, um, portable, and I wanted it to include all the features. Thank you so much. That is, I love this idea both from the technical side, but also the social side. Um, is there something in your, is there a friend or a family member that uh, inspired you to create this? Um, I cr well, I do have family who do have hearing losses, mm -hmm. but I also read the news quite often, and I often see people who die or get seriously injured because they do not carry the correct equipment. Okay. Thank you. Can you tell me a little bit about, um, you've emphasized portability. Does it always need to be plugged in, or does it have a, a rechargeable battery integrated? Um, yeah, this is where you recharge it. It'll okay. last half the day. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I love the portability feature of it because I think that's so important when you're traveling and you're, you're in an area that's not adaptable to that. For example, you mentioned a hotel room. Um, how, how, but how powerful is that vibration? I'm a pretty hard sleeper. Um, so it goes under the pillow. Do you think that's enough? It's enough of a vibration to, to awake someone? Yes, I have very deep sleepers in my family. <laughs> I, I tried it with them and yes. Very cool. Yeah, no, this is this is a great design. Um, I guess my question, and actually, they stole all of them. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, and I lost it, uh, but I can think of another one. So my question is, how long did it take you to design this? And then is it, I mean, because, and how do you take it around? So is it like in like a little satchel or is it, Potentially, could it be smaller later down the road with more development? So, I guess you can just put this anywhere. In, I mean, it's small enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Powerful. It's it's small for a purpose, so you can fit it inside a bag. It's taken anywhere, really. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Good afternoon. Sharks, imagine that while you're sitting down, hearing students present their inventions, you're able to generate enough electricity to turn the lights of this room on. Wouldn't ju that just be amazing? Well, Sharks, my name is Daniel Basilio Reda Felix. I'm a seventh grader from Arnold Knoll School, and today I'm going to be presenting you my invention, Thigen. The concept of Thigen is a temperature delta applied to a thermoelectric device to generate electrical energy. Customers, let me show you what I mean. Customers would be able to purchase two things, the Thigen modules or the Thigen core integration, both having the same function, utilizing the wasted thermal energy. In the example of the core integration, it would use the heat from the motor and the cold from the radiator to generate electrical energy. And as for the modules, they can be applied anywhere, meaning they could be sent to rural areas and they could be in placed in places such as walls, kit the kitchen, or even in furniture by using your body heat. The modules would look something like this. 
And if you have multiple, you would be able to connect them to have their electrical energy add up and be, be stored into a battery. Teacher's way of generating electricity is unique since it does not produce any pollution while generating electricity, therefore setting us a step closer to achieving the net zero carbon emissions goal by 2050, while also being able to bring electricity to many homes in rural areas. Now, let me show you um, how, the, how it would work. So this is a heat, and this would be like the cold source. And by applying it, it would generate electricity. I don't know if you can see the yeah. 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 yeah, I can see it. Well, thank you for your attention. This is phenomenal. One, you're using fire, which is always cool. <laughs> I'm so curious, what was your inspiration for this? Um, after the fridge broke down, I wanted to investigate what, what made it cool up. What made, what made the things not rot, rot, rotten. Okay. Oh, wow. No, that is very cool. I love the green project. Uh, I mean, this, <laughs> the project of being more green, I, I should say. Um, so this is very cool. How long did it take you to develop this? Um, it took me one week before I went to the, um, to the um, Innovation Expo inside the school. Okay. So I only had one week to assemble all the things. Wow. Thank you. I love this idea. I like it combines green and um, equity issues as well, which I really like. How much, how big would the unit have to be to produce, for example, 10 watts, or how much will this one produce? La I don't have the I didn't have the instruments to calculate it, but like solar panels are small, and with large amounts they're able to generate tons of electricity. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I suppose this would be the same. Thank you. So uh, you've got four uh, Peltier junctions here. How many would go in each of your uh, larger modules that would get integrated into walls or things um, like that? There wouldn't be like many Peltier cells, but have them. Mm, scaled up to fit this size. Okay, I see, okay. yeah. So that it's more efficient and you don't have all the wiring. Mm -hmm. Do they get more expensive when you manufacture them like that or uh, how, does, how does that look uh, financially? Um, it would get cheaper since the cable, there wouldn't be as, m as much cables going around. Yeah, cool. Thank and you. actually I had one more follow up. So would, what the, uh, the brown, Yes. Is that more like the battery? Is that would be like a battery pack that would store the no. electricity? This so would be like the battery, and these are the cells. Okay. Okay. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great job. Great job. Thanks. Hello. Today we are introducing the Hidden Hydro Cup. Um, the Hidden Hydro Cup is made for mothers who can't get their child to drink water. So many children don't like drinking water when there is soda in sight. So it's kind of working for that purpose. According to our research, children who don't like drinking water, it can cause issues in their health, mood, memory, and concentration. When symptoms like these are present, many mothers might fear that something's wrong with their child, but in reality, they are just dehydrated. To work our Aiden Hydro cup, we fill the outside cup with soda. After that, we fill the inside cup, the interior cup, with water. And then we put the lid on, and then it's ready for the child to drink, making it look like they're about to drink soda, but in reality, they're going to drink the water. We added a cushion handle for better grip and marbles for children with hyperactivity. We also added decorative stickers for children who like to personalize their own cups. Hidden Hydro helps a child with a smile. <laughs> I love that, that's very cool. Obviously, I'm not a mother, <laughs> but uh, I, I do sympathize with um, the need to get a child to drink what they're supposed to. And so, very cool design. I think it's it's very inventive. Um, is this something that would be 
uh, dishwasher safe? Like, because I think like you know the mother, you know, thinking going through that whole rhythm and routine, having to hand wash something may be more difficult. It would be dishwash safe. Um, it's actually not going to be made like this. This is just our prototype, and this is the, the easiest way we could make it. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Um, I am a mother, and I used a similar device, much smaller, to get my son to take his medicine, but it only worked like once because then he figured it out. Did you test this with any kids to see if they quit drinking water or if it tricked them long enough to get some in there? We actually did. Um, we tested this on our siblings since they had like no idea what we were making and it did work. Great. I really appreciated that you all acknowledged the differences between a prototype and a functional production unit. Could you talk through like what would be the number one or number two thing that you would be changing between your prototype and what you would hope to you know, do a full production run of? So for our final product, we do want to make it um, eco-friendly mm -hmm. because we know like it's plastic, so we also want to try that. And for our initial design to make the soda look like it's running out, we would add like a part on the bottom to make the soda like drain into the interior. As I look at your two prototypes, I love the marbles or the, the beads that are added to the one for like a fidget mechanism, yes. but I'm curious if there was a reasoning behind, or behind having two handles on one of them and one handle on one of them. So we created this one for three to five years old and this one six to nine because we know that younger um, children like um, holding their cups with two handles and six to nine usually hold it with one. And so that's why we created one. Makes perfect sense. Very cool. Thank you all so much. Really appreciate it. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. My name is Kailana Shriley and um, from Arnold Middle School. I'm from I'm in sixth grade and I invented the metal water bottle protector. So you know how um, metal water bottles are very common these days? People have them at school, you can see them at work, and people are carrying them around, but people are clumsy, <laughs> and they end up dropping it. Create, it creates um, a very loud and disruptive noise in the classroom or anywhere else. So my invention is to try and stop these loud noise fr noises from ever possibly scaring people. Um, I created it using like um, a fabric inner and outer layer, and the middle layer is made out of foam to be able to insulate it when it gets dropped. I also added a pocket to hold money or cards, and if you don't have the right water bottle size, I created um, an adjuster to be able to um, adjust your water bottle to the size of my invention. Um, to test out if it actually works, I dropped um, a water bottle a few times, and the average decibels it made was 85.8 decibels. Then I started um, to drop it with my cover on, and the average was 79.2 decibels. There's a 6.6 .6 decibel difference, and I made a 7.5% improvement from the cover on and the cover off, the difference and stuff. Um, I want to sell my product for um, $17, and it costed three, um, $13 or $14 to make, and I'd make a $3.15 profit out of it. Do you have any questions? Thank you so much. What a great idea. I know that when my children drop their water bottles, <laughs> it's startling, so I appreciate that. Um, how did, have you, are any of the materials um, wicking or waterproof to work on condensation at all? Mm-hmm. Um, it absorbs the water, so um, it won't be that much of a leak if the water bottle ever spills. Okay. Great, thank you. So I, I really admire the construction. I'm getting the sense that maybe you uh, sewed these yourself. Is that is that correct? Um, my dad actually helped me sew some awesome. of the hard parts. Cool, thank family you. effort. Uh, I, I know a lot of people like to put stickers on the outside of their water bottles. Have you thought about how uh, stickers might be applied to this or patches or, or something like that for um, customization? 
well, people have pins and you can see them on leather jackets and stuff. Mm -hmm. So people can put like pins on it. And you can also put like some like plastic pens that don't spike into it on the pockets if oh, you yeah. want to. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I love this idea. Um, as Maggie had mentioned, when a metal water, water bottle drops, it is very startling. Um, and I love the fact that it's just one more thing that I can customize. So I'm, I'm foreseeing a lot of different designs. How did you decide on the, on the two designs that you have showcased today? Or those favorite colors? What was your inspiration? Well, this is my first prototype and I just like the color green. It's very nice, but um, people were telling me that like, oh, I'd buy your invention, but I kind of wish it was blue. So I decided to make my second prototype blue. Very cool. Okay, so I'm gonna keep it with the customizable questions then. Have you thought about doing kind of like a, a range, like maybe like, you know, Roy G. Biv, all colors in the rainbow potentially, or you, are you trying to keep it limited to just a couple designs? Well, um, if I ever sold it, I'd let like people, like customers tell me like the exact design they want. Um, and then just one more question. So I know you said it cost $17. You're hoping to sell for $17, and then uh, it, it costs you about $14 to make. Have you thought um, of ways on getting that price down as far as making it? Well, um, it takes three to four days to make it. Like, one, if you're trying to rush, it takes, like, four to five. And I got these materials at a retail store, which is pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. So one thing I'd work on is trying to find materials that are really cheaper and still able to like be elastic and insulating. So yeah. Thanks. Well, thank you so much. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. You're great welcome. Time. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Hi, I'm Natalie Terry, and I'm in the sixth grade at Arnold Middle School. And today, I'm pleasure, I'm pleased to be presenting my project, the Poof Hoodie. The purpose of the Poof Hoodie is to prevent neck pain and provide comfort. So I decided that my problem was going to be whenever I I would like go on any trips, like travel, I would always end up having neck pain. So I decided to find a good solution for this. I found out that neck pillows are a really good solution, but I also found that neck pillows are one of the most common things in airport lost and founds. I decided to fix this by installing it into a hoodie. I found out that also most of my classmates get neck pain or have dealt with neck pain, so I think that this would, would be really good for them, and th they are really happy about it. Um, my methods that I used was just cutting and gluing, um, and I my materials I used was poly cotton for the connector. I used a neck pillow and a hoodie. The way it works is that whenever you just want to use it as a hoodie, um, the neck pillow lays on the back. So it's like not in the, even there. <laughs> Sorry, I can't get on. <laughs> Anyways, but when you want to use it as a, like, want to use it for traveling, like right when you get into the plane or a car, you can blow it up. It's really easy. <sighs> so once it's all blown up, you just place it on your neck and then slide your... <laughs> You just slide your arms um, through the sleeves. So yeah, that's my project. Awesome, Very thank great. you so much for uh, presenting for us. I'm, I'm wearing a suit right now, but as a computer scientist, my usual uniform is a hoodie year <laughs> round. Uh, and as someone who's staring at a screen all the time, neck pain is something I'm, I'm very familiar with. So I'm kind of wondering um, between what you've done here and maybe looking towards producing these and, and selling them, what would you change with what you've currently built looking towards like mass producing these? I would change, um, I would change the material to be allergen 
um, safe because some kids are sensitive to different types of materials. And I'd also use recycled materials just to, you know, save the earth. Nice, awesome. I love this concept. Um, I can see it being used in airports and car trips and plane rides. Um, any concern that it would be a little too easy to use in class and fall asleep? Yes, it is pretty easy, <laughs> but I'd say um, like school. some schools say you can't have like, ear, like earbuds or like wireless headphones, and I think this would probably be one of the things that you'd have to use, like block off the list. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, so I'm actually uh, flying today, and so I had the neck pain issue. I fly pretty regularly for work, um, but for me, it's the size. Like I, I'm like a tall person, you know, and so I don't know if this is like one size fits all, or if there are different sizes for you know per person. So there are going to be different sizes. This is a thing that you can customize to um, like different sizes, um, including the different shape of your um, neck pillow. Thank you. So my question is, my son owns a lot of hoodies already. Will you have the option to buy the customized attachment and pillow, or do you have to buy the whole unit? Um, I think it would be um, easier to um, like buy the whole unit, but again, you could buy the uh, attachment I was thinking that maybe it could be something Velcro, mm -hmm. so you could tap, you could take off like Velcro sticky things, place it on where you want it, and then mm -hmm. place on the attachment. It's a great idea. Thank you so much. Great job. Thank you so much for presenting to us today. You're welcome. Thank you. Hello Sharks, my name is Jacob Sanders and these are my friends Joshua Nace and Kelvin Art. And, and we, we made secure sheets. Many people find it annoying when their sheets come off their mattress. So our solution is attaching hook and loop to each corner of the sheet so it stays on tighter. The sheets are included with the hook and loop and it's already attached so you don't need to put it on yourself. But we still need to think about financing. Queen bed sheets cost around five to ten dollars to manufacture and hook and loop costs around five dollars which brings us to a total of around ten to fifteen dollars to manufacture. Our target selling price would be around twenty dollars and we would make a five to ten dollar profit per product sold. Now that we figured out the price that we're gonna sell our product for, we need to figure out the market audience we're gonna sell our product to. Our market audience is ho hotels, hospitals, and elderly people that live alone, since they would have trouble putting sheets on by themselves. So sharks, any questions? Well, I think you've definitely addressed one of the most annoying things that you can wake up to in the morning, and that's the corner of your sheet coming off, your, your fitted sheet coming off your mattress. I'm curious with your prototype that you tested, did it make it any more difficult to make the bed when you were putting the sh these sheets on yeah, or do you think it was us. just as easy? So the thing is, um, it's like, so you know how like, like the strap on shoes, like Skechers and stuff where you like, so you put the sheets on just like they were normal sheets and then right when, once they're all on, that's when you strap them. It's like a strap and it goes around and it makes it tighter. So the, the sheets stay loose until you make it tighter. So it's easy to put on. Yeah, so I'm actually the target audience. I, I, when I tell you that happened this morning, I'm not kidding. And uh, so really cool idea. Didn't think about an invention to try to, you know, make that not happen. So very cool. Um, I guess my question is, uh, so what is it? So is it is it hooked up to, like, the bed frame, and then it's it's hooked that way? Or I guess I'm trying to visualize how it's actually, how, how you put it on. It's basically, like, hooked to itself. It's like tightening it when you pull it and then you just put it on and then it just stays tight. Yeah. So for like each corner of the sheets, like this corner will have a hook and this other corner will have loop and then it's like a fabric thing that has a loop on it and you pull it around to the other corner. It keeps it tight. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Did you make... I think you made a prototype. Did you test this with anybody um, other yes. than yourself yes. to see how they no. did? Sorry. Just do it with ourselves. Okay. And you guys found it easy to put on, take off, wash? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, I guess that's that was a good, another good question, uh, the washing piece of it. So it can easily just, you just throw it in the washing machine? Yeah. yeah type it's of like thing. a normal sheet. It's just like normal fabric, so. Okay. 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 All right. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm envisioning this, uh, just to kind of add to the clarifications here, 
Is this going around the fitted sheet uh, that goes on the bed first, or like the sheet that goes on top of that? It goes on the fitted sheet, so okay. it's like an extra okay. thing to Got tie it. in onto. But could I potentially, since it's this adjustable strap situation, one of my biggest things is waking up in the morning and like the dogs have moved the sheets out of the way and my feet are hanging out. Could I additionally like hook the the regular sheet into this strap as well to keep the f the foot of the sheet attached to the fitted sheet as well? You could like put it, put the corner of the sheet into the strap and tying it with the fitted sheet. And then it's like a two-in-one. Awesome. So it works like that too. Yeah. Great idea. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank thank you, guys. you. Hi, I'm Camden Gilmore. And I'm Preston Lewis. And our um, product is the scrub glove. So do you ever wash the dishes at home? Me too. I don't like getting all the eggs and ketchup on my hand whenever I'm washing the dishes. So that's what the scrub glove is for. Our product conceals your hand in a um, glove whilst being able to dispense soap and scrub dishes. The people that we are selling our product to is teenager girls with long nails that don't want them to get dirty and just normal people that wash dishes. We will be selling packs of three for ten nine or for nine ninety nine. Oh, okay. So I, I'm sorry. I know you're finished. Very cool. Thank you. So cool design. Um, I have a couple questions. So first, is it because obviously my hand's a little bit different size than yours? Is are there multiple sizes? And then the second question I have: um, Will the soap kind of dispense by itself in a way? Does it have like a stopper when you like go down like that or you just keep it open and just push it down? So for your first question, they do come in different sizes for left and right hands. And with the soap dispenser, all you have to do is just point down and um, squeeze the bottle. Okay, thank you. I love this idea. I do hate washing dishes. Um, you said three for nine ninety nine. How much does it cost you to produce one? It's about two dollars to make one of them. Okay. So, as a lefty, uh, I really appreciate your consideration of people who are a bit special. Um, <laughs> so, thank you for uh, pitching us that. I'm I'm curious. From a materials breakdown, uh, are there any elements of this product that are reusable? Uh, so if I buy like your starter set, could I then add a new pad to it or a new soap to it? Or is it used once and then you need to replace it? Used once and then you need to replace it. Okay, got it. Awesome, thank you. So I'm curious if you tried this out on actual dirty dishes. Was it still easy? I'm wondering, I guess, because one hand just has a normal glove on it. It doesn't have the sponge on it. Am I understanding that correctly? Yes, yes. Okay, because I was kind of wondering about manipulating the dishes and making sure I didn't drop one. So do you feel like it was easy to use with actual soapy water, dirty dishes? Uh, it was easy to use. And it, the easiest things to use it on is normal plate because it's just flat and you just scrub. And it was just really easy to use on bowls because you could like change your hand and you didn't have to like re-grip the sponge and stuff. I do, I guess, have a follow-up um, to kind of Chad's piece on it not being reusable. So uh, what's like the like life use of it? So how long, how many dishes can you scrub with one glove, essentially? I have to say about 50 dishes. Okay. Well, look, thank you all. We really appreciate your time. Great. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ella, and this is Addison. Unfortunately, our other partner couldn't make it here today. We are seventh graders from Evans Middle School, and our product is called the Table Topper. As students, we often struggle with a lack of desk space, especially in hands-on activities or just everyday lessons. 
Um, more times than not, we have no room for supplies in our limited work areas. We created our product to give us more space without being complicated or bulky or poses a distraction. That is why we created the Table Topper, a simple lightweight tray that attaches to any desk or table of your choice. It is able to hold many materials, all while not taking up too much space. It also comes in multiple colors and we hope to have various sizes in the future. So if you struggle with a lack of desk space, you should try our simple solution, the, the Table Topper. Very good, very good. How, my first question is, how does it attach to the desk? So there is a clamp on the back, and depending on how thick your table is, you would just um, screw it down, and it will fit, and then you just screw it back, and it'll tighten it up. So you could take it from class to class. Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. Yes. Great idea. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, I really appreciated in your uh, presentation, your slide deck, you had like picked out color swatches already, mm -hmm. like the design elements was very well composed. I'm curious, um, in a normal classroom, uh, if you had, you know, multiple desks with the table topper mm -hmm. in the aisleway, does that still leave enough room to walk down those aisles? Well, it does depend on the classroom. Sure. And once again, this is just a prototype. So if we were to actually make it and sell it, we would make different sizes. But for the time we had, we just made something that was easier to test out. Yeah, of course. Okay. Thank you. So when I look at your prototype, it looks pretty substantial. Mm -hmm. Did you do any kind of weight limit testing? Is there any, was there anything that was too heavy that it didn't work for? Um, there does, like there is a limit of how much it can hold. Like I wouldn't try to put anything too heavy, but just your regular school supplies like pencils, crayons, scissors, and tape, that kind of stuff is what it's made for, so. Oh, excuse me, and then what's it made out of? So it is just a plastic tray and a metal clamp, and we just glued that together and spray painted this to a more desirable color. And then just to follow up, what made you come up with it? So we noticed in science that we were doing a lot of labs and stuff that require a lot of material, and our tables weren't exactly long enough and big enough to hold all of our materials. So when we were brainstorming, we thought of something that could help out a lot of kids just like us. And we figured out this could be a simple, easy way to fix that problem. Well, thank you. Very good. Excellent. Thank you, girls. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Oh, and we have some business cards. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry, I got it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Great. Thanks Great for time. having thank us. You. Thank you. Well, uh, what a great crop of projects we've had this year. I think we've got a lot to discuss here. I'll, I'll start by saying uh, I'm now absolutely dreaming of having a poof hoodie for at my desk <laughs> yes. as I'm writing code. That seems like a dream product to have. Yes, no, I agree. Uh, really talented bunch. Um, I, I could potentially use each one of their inventions. I was very impressed. Um, I would say the Aquarius spot, I thought that was very unique, um, especially I thought like how they went into the detail with the fingerprints. Mm -hmm. I was blown away by the creativity and the intelligence of these prototypes. And I have to say one of my favorites was the bubble bin. I mean, really incentivizing people to do the right thing by getting a little treat every time you recycle. I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were so creative and I was so impressed that they went the extra mile to actually participate. Their presentations were great. I was really inspired. I thought the automatic plant waterer was amazing. I think that scaling that and keeping my plants alive at home is a, an issue a lot of people have. I think it'd be a great solution. Yeah, continuing on my dream theme, uh, <laughs> the secure sheets seemed like a product that I could really use. Um, yeah, very, very practical idea. Yeah, and, and continuing the practicality piece, the scrub glove, um, we talked about it, a bunch of dishes already s sitting in my <laughs> sink right now that I need to probably tackle here soon. <laughs> Guilty as well. <laughs> well, you can use your scrub glove then to clean my hidden hydro cup <laughs> because I think that's a great way to get kids to drink more water. I agree, yeah. I thought the table topper was a great idea for a temporary 
uh, extra storage space that they could move from class to class. I thought it was really, really creative. Yeah, and uh, in the realm of high tech this year, we had a couple of great projects, one of them being the smoke detector for hearing impaired, um, the ability for the student to put a bunch of electronics in a box and do something meaningful with it and uh, have it be robust enough to bring in here and demonstrate was very impressive. I thought the gin was amazing. It was a really high tech solution to a global need and I thought it was very creative and a little um, higher higher tech than I expected today. Mm -hmm. I was right, very impressed. Right. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Yeah, when it comes to like really like raising the bar, um, I think the metal water bottle protector in her presentation when she could actually quantify the yeah. difference in decimals because when those metal water bottles hit a hard floor, it is shocking. Mm -hmm. Yes, agree, <laughs> agree. <laughs> Well, a, a lot of great projects, a lot of very talented students. Uh, do we think we have our decision? I think it's I do. tough, yeah. but I think we do. Yeah. I, think we yeah. do. I feel good about it. Yeah. Likewise, me too. Thank you all so much for coming here today and pitching us your projects. It was an honor to be here listen to your pitches and have the opportunity to engage with you in discussion about your projects and engage with the fellow sharks uh, discussing your projects. I genuinely hope that all of you can continue your research and work towards product development and I wish you the best of luck. Unfortunately, it's been uh, told to me that I have the duty of announcing the top three teams and dismissing the rest of you today. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, I would like the following three teams to please step forward. The metal water bottle protector, the auto plant waterer, and the gin. Everyone else, thank you so much for being here. I hope we can see you again here on Coweta County Shark Tank. Thank you all for being here. It's been uh, positively inspirational hearing about your projects today. It's now my pleasure to be able to announce that all three of you are award winners, but we'll start with the People's Choice Award. With over 10,000 votes, it was the Auto Plant Waterer. Congratulations. Great job. Now with second place, I can announce that that was the, wa the Metal Water Bottle Protector. Great Congratulations, work. congrats. Which by process of elimination means that the gin is our first prize winner today. Congratulations. Congratulations. Great job, everyone. Amazing job, very impressed. Yeah, I was very impressed by everyone. Great job. You guys can look happy. <laughs> <laughs> now you can jump up and down if you'd like. Yeah. Yeah. Great job, y'all. Congratulations. Very Thank you, very Great gorgeous. work. Seriously. We're done? Okay, y'all can. And thank you to the crew. Have yeah, a great day. You. Thank you. They all did a great Very job. This has been an original production for the CEC Network.